As engineers, we work on a lot of projects. And specifically big projects can feel endless, just going on and on and on and on. Never ending. What are we doing? Why isn't this project ending? Why do we need to keep finding things? So let's drill down on why this is. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. This is something that if you haven't experienced, you will definitely experience sometime in your career. So some of the reasons behind this is both practical reasons why things actually occur, and there's actually a psychological aspect to it, which we'll drill down onto later. As you're finding yourself nearing the end of a project, you start to think about what are the next steps? Is the project good enough? Have I actually done enough? Is there any problems that I need to tie up? Doing all those little details, so the last 20% can take 90 to 80% of the time, or at least it feels like it. Quite often you're just keeping going on and on and on, finding additional areas that you need to clean up and finish up, tying up all those loose ends. Especially when you're doing the end of the project, it's really not the fun stuff anymore. You start to feel fatigued. You're starting to look at the same drawings over and over again and just keep spotting things that just need to be repaired, updated and fixed. And you have that burning desire just to jump into something new and leave it behind. Unfortunately, you do need to finish it off. But what you're overlooking is a psychological aspect that's causing you to think like this. And this is a simple study called the Blue Dot Experiment. It was actually expanded out into a wider field of interest. But the implication of this study is actually wider than you may think, leading to all aspects of our lives and how we behave and how we perceive things. But let's drill down on the experiment so we can understand a little bit why, then work out why this actually related to our projects and the effects that it actually has and how potentially we can stop them from occurring to make sure we finish off projects in the same way that we started them. The experiment started off a set of test subjects having to spot the number of blue dots on a page of different colors. You see at the start, they had the equal number of dots so it was quick and easy to spot the number of blue circles on the page. But as the experiments went on, they reduced the number of dots that the people had to choose from. And it was slowly and slowly dropped until the number was almost approaching zero. The number of blue dots steadily and steadily dropped until the point that some participants were just shown shades of purple, not blue. Something that was counterintuitive, as the blue dots became rarer and rarer and rarer, the participants started detecting some of these shades of purple as blue, leading to a bigger and bigger error rate. So the other thing is as well, the participants actually warned that the number of blue dots were dropped, and they gave a $10 reward for encouraging them to detect the correct number. So despite getting that warning and that clarification, they still detected the purple dots as blue. Something that they realized through this study is the brain doesn't have a hard fast rule between how to perceive and what it actually means. So they changed their perception of what blue was by moving it towards a more bluish purplish range. One follow up experiment to see how it can actually affect the real world was showing people mugshots of threatening and non-threatening people. So again, starting off at that 50-50 ratio where they made good predictions. Then again, warning them that the number of faces would reduce between you'd have more non-threatening people than threatening people. But over time, the same problem occurred where people's perception of what was threatening expanded with them seeing more and more error rate as the number of threatening people reduced in the series of mugshots that they were shown. So if you're tasked to do one thing to find something, you're more likely to spot errors that aren't actually there. So we're constantly recalibrating what our perception is, defining our extended vision of what actually is a problem and what isn't a problem. And this will happen across all things. So this is a, something that we need to watch out for. If we're constantly trying to find problems, it's more likely that we'll find problems that aren't actually there. So if our brain is constantly recalibrating our perception, we need to make sure that we're watching out for it. Are we actually spotting errors? Or are we spotting errors as our perception has increased? So what does this mean for projects? and the never ending projects. As we're constantly trying to find things to do, as the area starts to drop off, we start to see more and more things that we need to do that potentially don't even need to be done. And as experts, that's what we try to do. This is what we're trying to spot those errors. Potentially what we're doing is spotting errors that aren't actually there and not real issues. And this combined with the expertise bias that I'll link here, will give you more insights at some of the problems as you progress through your career and some things to watch out for. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, keep learning and I'll see you next week. Bye.